A lot of the shapes are very unique around the eye. They're not, there's not a lot of uniformity necessarily. And if we break things down into geometric forms, it can also help us kind of think about the way that things interact with each other. We usually have these, uh, you know, everyone kind of thinks about the eye in these kind of like almond-like shapes, which there are, there is, that is taking place but we don't, it's only because there are very real structures around the eye that are causing those shapes to take place. So it's not because there's anything about the eye that actually resembles the almond, the almond shape, which is this kind of this shape here. And then when it comes to the eyelids, we wanna remember that these are thicker pieces of skin than we really think, right? They have these, this flat plane on top on the top and bottom. And this is where the, eye, the eyelashes actually protrude right above. So they're not coming from in here, they're coming from out here. And I'm making some um, kind of stylized ones here. And then we kind of see typically the eye as it, as it's, as it kind of curves down, we're getting the shapes here, right? Because we remember this is a, a, sphere, a spherical shape. It's a sphere, and we want to represent that. This area is going to be closer to us and lighter than this area. This area experiences more shadows. And this, this muscle tends to be protruding outwards and then experience, we experience a little more, or we see a little more shadow here. And then the eyebrow takes place above this. Now this is the right eye, as if we were looking directly at someone. And we also wanna be careful when we draw the pupil and the iris. and really pay attention to our reference. We don't want to just assume it's in the middle. And based on kind of the style that, that you like to portray in your piece or in your sketch, you can make it darker, lighter, you can have no pupil. But for now, we're, we'll stick with our studies. So this is um, this representation of current study, uh, reference I have in front of me. So we have this separation here between the eyelid and this upper layer of skin. As we get closer into this area here, which the eyebrow kind of takes up this space here, we experience more shadows because this area here is actually going inwards. It's, we're experiencing depth, we're seeing depth there. So we wanna represent that in our piece. And then here, our shading should somewhat match and be related to the direction of this curved, curved eyelid here. We even experience a little bit of shading here, as well as more eyelashes. You can add more eyelashes there. Now I'm shading this area because a lot of this area ends up being dark because it's being covered by the brow ridge here. So we wanna remember that even though this is protruding, this area falls deeper into the face. And then it comes back out again when we get close to the bridge of the nose here. We end up seeing this area here, which usually, usually has a little bit of a pinkish hue because it's where the eye meets skin. And then we have the cheek that continues downwards and 
some line work, some lines that kind of take place as this, this muscle meets the eyelid here. These eyebrows are a little loose, but you kind of get the job done as it carries over to the side of the head. And now when we look at, and this is actually the reference of, for this image came from a random eye I found on Pinterest. This is a male eye. And we can look at a female eye and there are obviously, the only difference is really being the lessening of kind of the wrinkles in the folds within the, like the musculature around the eye. Um, and it also depends on the age and what we're kind of, what we're drawing. Eyelashes obviously can have a, a different effect. And there's a softness around the top of the eye as well. And the eyelid when you're drawing a female eye. And if we're breaking things down into geometric forms, we have to try to remember just to think about it in that way. So I'm, I'm starting with these shapes, the almond-like shape, but we don't want to restrict it to that shape. We want to keep things loose and kind of let the, let our pen kind of glide around a little bit just to experience where some of these other shapes are taking place, some of these other lines are taking place. This eye is slightly more open, so we're going to see more of the pupil in the iris. Remember to draw the highlight, there's always a highlight usually over the pupil. And we want to be careful with the space that we use around the eye because if there's a little more space on one side than the other, we want to capture that. If there's too much space, then we completely change the expression. And unless you're going for a particular expression that's different from your reference, that's something that's, that's, you have to be very careful with. Now there isn't a lot of, you don't want to overdo it with line work and shading when you're drawing a female eye because it can tend to age age it very quickly, age your figure or your portrait very quickly. There's certain areas that you want to be careful of when you're drawing. Line work or adding more shapes or, or anything like that because it can, it can definitely change the perspective and change the way things are perceived for your piece. And now if we were to kind of see, um, if we were to break down We'll break down the other side. And we really, it really is very helpful to think about things in terms of shapes. Because we can, we can kind of describe the entire area of what's around the eye and the anatomy that takes place around it in a very simple, very, very simply and very quickly if we use a lot of kind of basic geometry, geometrical, if we use a lot of basic geometrical shapes, really. There's a, a lot of classic, classical anatomy that can like really help you with this because, or at least looking at a lot of kind of classical sculptural works and a lot of the works of the masters that, that they've done, looking at what they've done and using the geometry that they did, the shapes that they did to really create Now this is the left side of the face, if we were looking directly at the portrait. And I've blocked out a few of the different areas that are going to be highlighted and a few of the areas that are going to be kind of darker shadow areas. 
So I'll use some line work to kind of showcase where the shadow areas are. And you see this is a much heavier kind of brow ridge and um, kind of eyebrow muscle here. But we have our basic structure and we have our top eyelid, bottom eyelid. And we want to remember that the shape that we are creating here, even though we can't see a lot of the eye, we're still creating this basic, this basic anatomical structure. Top eyelid, bottom eyelid, pupil and iris. As the eye continues behind the skin, we can't see what's happening there. We just get to see a little piece of it. But these areas of the eyelids are wrapping around around the eyeball. We have to keep that in mind. We don't, we don't want to forget that because we start to kind of make up what's actually taking place and we don't want to be doing that either. We want, we want to be thinking about the actual physical aspect of the eye while we're drawing it and while we're creating it because otherwise we'll just start, we'll start making up anatomy and things will lose shape really, really quickly. And that's always, that's always really bad. It's easy to do. I mean, especially when, especially when you're first kind of studying these things. And I forget it sometimes too, when I'm painting, you're, you start you start seeing things that aren't there and you just forget, it's very common. And you're not, you know, we aren't, we aren't robots. It's easy to, it's easy to make mistakes when it comes to that kind of thing. And if we look at, we can look at the side of the eye now and again, we're going to be representing the eyelids covering the top. And depending on your perspective, we don't want to forget also the top of the eyelids or that section, that little kind of shelf that separates the eyelid from the eye. And based on, based on kind of which direction you're looking at it from, certain, certain muscle groups are going to kind of take precedent over others. And the way things wrap around each other is becomes really interesting, actually, because we have these this, these deep areas here, but then we have the bridge of the nose, and the muscle groups start to extend outwards and then downwards, and we almost have we almost have everything in this in this area starts to feel like it's wrapping around the eye, being the center of the area all these muscle groups start to reflect these basic shapes, almost like a ripple, a ripple in a pond or something. There's a really interesting kind of thing that happens when you look at anatomy in this particular area of the face. I always thought that these kind of beautiful swirls that take place are really, really interesting. I think that's why eyes have always been really unique and really fun to draw. So this the bottom eyelid is again being hidden by the top or the end of it meets with the top eyelid and is tucked underneath. This larger muscle group on top comes before and then we have the depth near the inside of the eye towards the nose and these structures are always really fun to draw because you have these big planes that then lead towards these very small areas. Now this is very, um, I'm showing a lot of the kind of creasing between the muscles and, and the kind of tighter groups here around the eye. That's more of a stylistic choice right now, but it kind of showcases what's happening underneath the skin. And it's in a more, in a more extreme way, it's kind of also showcasing the literal shapes that are reflecting light when, when you're looking at the eye from a side angle.
I'm taking another look at kind of the, a little bit of a deeper look at the musculature that's taking place here. And in this lesson, we were mostly, fo we're mostly focused on kind of getting the structures right and placing things in the right areas so that we're not drawing things too large or too small. But after that, the rest is, can be loose and, and there, the area, the areas that you can play around with are, are really up to you. I mean, you, I have things that I like doing when I'm portraying eyes and they're one of my favorite things to draw. I've done a lot of pieces where the main focus is just the eye. I think they're incredibly powerful. They're, there's a reason that they are talked about in the way, the way that they are when, when being drawn and portrayed. In a piece of artwork, it's something that everybody is noticing. And when something is off with the eyes, it's the first thing you do notice. That alone should be a giveaway as to, a dead giveaway as to how, how they should be considered. And to really study them and understand them, whether you're drawing or painting or whatever you're doing with your work, so that they can be relatable, approachable, and you really give the viewer something to peer into, something to find peace with. And typically, the edge of the eye comes down here, behind where the nose is. Now obviously this is a very, a very uh, kind of simple depiction of the nose and the eye, being that there aren't, they aren't at any extreme angle. We have the nostril ending here typically. We have the eye at an angle. It's not as directly, isn't as straight as you might think. There's a, t there's a little bit of an angle there. These are shapes I'm adding in because I'm signifying where shadows are. We have the bottom lid that comes down below. And then we have a lead, uh, lead in area to our cheek. Now, these ratios obviously change slightly depending on who you're drawing, what their, what kind of lines up in specific ways with their face. But it's something to keep in mind the way that some of these things do line up. The way that the top of the lid lines up with the bridge of the nose the way at the center of the of the nostril can line up with the top of the bridge of the nose and that the eye often comes down to be near the end of the mouth or at least the bottom the bottom lid does but some of these angles are important to consider because they're they can be easily mistaken and earlier in something like this it's a very character, characterized version only meant to display the anatomy. So it almost seems like I would be breaking my own rule, but there's also a lot of play within the eye as well. As long as you're including these structures, these things that give the eye the, the interest that it has when drawing realism, when painting, 
or when doing very expressive kind of impressionistic line work. Those are all things that are important to consider. When you have extreme angles, such as in this, this piece here, we have to pay attention to how one area gains a lot more length, the other area is much, much shorter now. We don't want to forget about also our eyelid, the depth of our eyelid, which is incredibly important. Now I like to play around with these other structures and keep things really loose because there's a lot of muscles in here that are easy to overdo, but as long as we're remembering the, the basic guideline that we talked about here, where there's almost a ripple effect of muscles that take place around, wrapping around this area of the eye, things become larger and more expansive as you go outwards. And it's good to just draw as many of these as possible. Um, draw them from all different angles. Get used to thinking about the way that the structure works so you can replicate it in different ways and also keep the same, you're always kind of keeping that same anatomy in mind, remembering kind of what, what you saw from all the different angles that you've been studying. And when you go to approach a piece or a portrait or drawing from life or anything like that. You can remember the way that things are made up. And when you're doing your own personal work, it'll be easier to kind of recall, oh, that's right, the, you know, the, this muscle is typically here in this form. It's a little bit larger here, and some people it's more pronounced, and other people it's softer, and other people it's, you know, the eyelid takes a, a, a much more rigid shape and other people it's a little, it's a little more round, you know, it, and it depends on the portrait, the person, but when we start to recognize these things, that's what really helps.